Roster turnaround in the NBA is at an all time high. And every single day I wrestle with myself trying to figure out if I really like it or or do I hate it? Because listen, there are some things to like. It seems like every single season there's this new hot commodity. The Cavaliers got Donovan Mitchell. The Timberwolves got Rudy Gobert. These are exciting things. But I'll be honest with you. There are some things that I don't like. Like, come on, bro. Here go, here go old head Kenny coming out. Where is the active NBA rivalries? Not the ones rooted in location like Clippers versus Lakers or Brooklyn Nets versus Knicks. Not, no, I mean like the ones that were fueled just by playing basketball. They don't really exist like that, you know? Trey Young versus Knicks, eh, it was one playoff series. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they booing, but that's not even real rivalry because we've only seen one series of that. I guess 76er fans and, and, and Boston Celtics fans hate each other. That's probably a good one, but we don't have a ton of active rivalries. And don't hit me with Warriors versus Grizzlies. That's a baby rivalry. It's been like two months. No, but you know what rivalry had potential to be great but has not lived up to it? Clippers versus Lakers, Paul George, Kawhi, Anthony Davis, LeBron, like, yeah, they've given us some cool games, but I wouldn't even call it like a super big rivalry because the Clippers can't stay healthy and the Lakers decided to blow up their entire roster. I'm not talking about it. That's not what this video is supposed to be about. We're supposed to be talking about roster turnaround in the NBA. So I've been thinking about it quite a bit. So I decided to go back to look at Sports Illustrated top 100 players going into the 2020-2021 season. That was what, two years ago, two seasons ago. And uh, the numbers are staggering on how much roster turnaround we're really seeing. And these are the top 100 players in basketball. 50% of those players are no longer the team that they represented in 2020-2021. For me, that number is extremely high. And that's not even counting like the Mike Conleys, the Bogdanoviches, basically everybody that's still on Utah who are rumored to be traded before training camp. That's not even counting those. Half of the top 100 players in basketball have switched rosters in two years time. Kenny, you talk about players 96 and 97. Nobody really cares about that. Here's the all-star team. These are players that were on the all-star team that season that are no longer representing the team that they were representing that year. James Harden, the Monta Sabonis, Ben Simmons, Russell Westbrook, Rudy Gobert, Kyle Lowry, Donovan Mitchell. Remember Kemba Walker was an all-star in Chicago a couple years ago? And lastly, Chris Paul, who put together one of my favorite seasons of all time, him and OKC. I might make a whole video about that. But we're seeing top-end talent switching rosters very, very quickly. We're seeing rumors of top-end talent potentially switching teams. KD gave us two months of rumors, and with that came Kyrie Irving giving us two months of rumors. It is happening faster than any time before. So today's video, I wanna try to predict what is the next all-star caliber talent that will be traded. Some of these come out of left field. I would Actually, I would argue majority of these come out of left field where like all of a sudden this player disgruntled or this organization decided, oh, we wanna go a different direction and boom, they're on a different team. Like for real, it felt like James Harden was gonna be a Houston Rocket for life. And he's been on two different teams since that time. And I don't have a script no more. I had a script for the beginning and now we just talking hoops. Oh, and I also don't have a great track record doing these type of things because I asked the same exact question to my podcast going into last season. And the name I came to mind with was Carl Anthony Towns. I thought there was a possibility where Carl Anthony Towns either requested a trade or the Minnesota Timberwolves decided to trade him away if things didn't go well. You saw, it went well. They made the playoffs and they decided to buy into Car Anthony Towns and buy into Anthony Edwards this offseason. So the likelihood of Car Anthony Towns getting traded are close to zero. But I thought that, listen, we've only made the playoffs one time since I've been here. I've been an Iron Man for this organization. Y'all haven't built anything around me. I thought that if they missed the playoffs again, it wouldn't have been too crazy for Car Anthony Towns to request out. It didn't happen and he might be there for a super long time. Shout out to them. So there are a few teams that we can cross off automatically. And those are the teams that I would say don't have a all-star caliber talent to trade away. Like how, how can I say that the Houston Rockets are going to trade away all-star caliber talent? They don't have that. They got some young players that might become all-stars, but these are not all-star caliber talents in this moment of time. Even if they are all-star caliber talents, they're not trading Jalen Green, bro. He's, he's the second year of his contract. There's no reason to trade him unless you're throwing him in a trade to get somebody else, which doesn't seem likely for the Houston Rockets. So the teams that means we're eliminating are the Detroit Pistons, the Houston Rockets, the Indiana Pacers, the Orlando Magic, and the San Antonio Spurs. Them, them rosters don't either don't have an all-star caliber talent, it was just not gonna happen. The next group of players that we're 1,000% eliminating are the guys that I think it's a 0.000001% chance that that team would trade them, especially the next star player to be traded. We're talking about the Giannis, so Bucks are off the list. We're talking about Jokic, he's off the list. We're talking about Philadelphia 76ers, they're off the list because they bought in to Joel Embiid this offseason and last year we traded for James Harden. Oh, we eliminated the Jazz too because they, they did that. Like Steph Curry's not getting traded. LeBron is not getting traded. Kawhi or Paul George aren't getting traded, right? Anthony Davis isn't getting traded, right? I mean, I'm gonna say no, I'm gonna say no, but like, 
cra crazier things have happened. And then I would eliminate the teams that just did the buy-in. You know what I'm saying? So the Atlanta Hawks aren't trading Trey Young because it just bought into DeJounte Murray. The Cavs, the Timberwolves, the teams that made the superstar splashes this offseason. I'm also not including the Brooklyn Nets because... Come on, dog. That's that's this will be a two minute video of he's talking because they were already about to do that. So I'm not even including them. They won't be including a lot of these videos, but I don't know what to do with the Brooklyn Nets right now. I'm be honest with you. So if you're keeping up at home, these are the teams that we are still deciding whether or not we believe there's a world where they would trade their star player. Wizards, Raptors, Kings, Blazers, Suns, Knicks, Heat, Bulls, Celtics, Hornets and Thunder. OK. Immediately, I kind of want to take off the Miami Heat because I personally believe if they are going to trade one of their star players, and I'm considering Bam a star player in these circumstances, if they're trading Bam, they're trading up to Bam, you know what I'm saying? Up from Bam, they're throwing him in a trade to get a superstar player, not trading him away because they want to hit a reset. And Jimmy Butler feels like he's going to be a Miami Heat for Heat or Heater? Heater? He's going to be a Heat for the rest of his career. That's just what it feels like. But again, I said the same thing about Harden, so I mean, I don't really know. I think a lot of people would look at the OKC Thunder because after the New York Knicks struck out on Donovan Mitchell, there is a report that they have shifted gears on a, the next potential disgruntled star and Shea Gugis Alexander was the, was the thumbnail and people speculating he might be it. Uh, and, and me and my guys had this conversation on how long do we believe the OKC Thunder can convince Shea to go through this rebuild? Because if you don't know, the first couple years of Shea Gears Alexander's career, he was a playoff player as a rookie with the Clippers. He was a part of that one team that was down by like 36 points um, and ended up winning the game. And then the second year is with the Chris Paul bubble year. So he had been in the playoffs the first two years of his career. And since then, he's been on the heavy tank roster. And it seems like he either can't stay healthy or the team continues to shut him down. And I know that Shea Gibbs Alexander loves to play basketball. And he already got a taste of what the playoffs are like. How long can they convince him uh, of a rebuild? And with all the draft capital they have, I mean... They might be thinking rebuild for quite some time. And I think what hurts them in this situation, I don't think I'm picking Shea, just, just to say that, but what hurts them in this situation is the fact that Chet is out for the season. Because I do believe there's a world where Chet comes into the league and he's really solid off rip and Shea's looking at what he's got around him and Josh Giddy being a, one of the better playmakers in basketball and Chet being a plus player. He's like, okay, I can sustain this for like another year or two. And just like that, Chet is one of the better bigs in the league and giddy continues to progress oh Jalen williams is a plus player and now we're in playoff conversations but now without chad being there it's like oh man i i, I gotta play with Baisley full time no disrespect to darius Baisley, but like there's levels to this, you know what I'm saying? There's levels of excitement between playing with Darius Baisley and playing with Chet Holmgren. It's, it's simple. I'm hoping that's not really the case for OKC because it seems like they've been through a lot and they would hate to have to trade another promising young player, but I don't feel like it's out of the realm of possibility that he could be the next star all-star caliber talent to be traded. The Washington Wizards gave Bradley Beal a no trade clause, so maybe he's not next either. No trade clause on Bradley Beal is insane. There's not a lot of people in recent NBA history to get a no trade clause. Bradley Beal did that. I mean, I, he means a lot for the city. You know what I'm saying? He's, he raised his family there, so I understand wanting to, to buckle down, but no trade clause blows my mind. Toronto Raptors is an interesting one. Um, they struggled to come out the, out the gate and then ended up being a playoff team. And second half of the season, they were amazing. Fred Van Vliet made an all-star appearance, but I still consider Pascal Siakam the best player on the roster right now. So when I'm talking about potentially trading your star, I'm not looking at Fred, I'm more looking at Pascal Siakam. I think it really depends on how this season goes. I don't see them as a team that's gonna take a step back. I see them as a part of the, the tier two amongst NBA teams. They're underneath like Philly, Boston, you know what I'm saying, Miami, and who am I forgetting about? Milwaukee. They're in that tier two. They're a young, up and coming, promising team with a lot of potential, a lot of length. So I feel like trading away Pascal Siakam would be kind of crazy. It really doesn't fit Masai's MO to bottom out or sell a really, really talented player. Seems like a team that'll always be retooling for the future until they really, really hit. But I could see a universe where Pascal doesn't fit the timeline, put that in quotation marks, as he's 28 years old, gonna be 29 at the end of next season, and he only has this upcoming season and the year after that under his contract. I don't really know, I doubt it. It just doesn't seem like the Toronto Raptors way but I'm keeping it in this tier. The Kings, I, I, what, what do I say about the Kings? Is it De'Aaron Fox? Is it Sabonis? I, think, I don't think those two players get traded just because in the time they have played together, they were pretty good. Um, and it seems like they're bought into this core. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm basically eliminating them off the list. Also trading a, a high usage point guard 
um, that has been shown that he needs the ball a ton, it's not going to be a lot of teams that's going to be extremely interested in that, especially at like a trade deadline. You know what I'm saying? That's like a move you make in the offseason. Now we can work around. The Blazers are still a really, really interesting team, but Dame also signed an extension this offseason, so it's probably out of the window. If they didn't trade Dame last season or two seasons ago, it feels like it's not going to happen. They've messed up the highest amount of value you can get for Dame, and they actually built it, built a what seems like competent roster around him, at least in the starting lineup. I really like their starting five, uh, so I'm, I'm going to take them off the list for now because Dame wants to be a Portland Trailblazer lifer. I'm eliminating the Phoenix Suns too because the more I think about it, the more it doesn't make sense for them to potentially trade uh, Devin Booker or Chris Paul because those are the two star players I'm even thinking about. Devin Booker is going to be there for some time. I don't see a world where he requests out. And then if they do trade Chris Paul, what the heck is a Chris Paul market at this age? And if you are trading Chris Paul, who's stepping in? It's not like you got a, a young up and coming point guard coming off the bench that we trust. Nah, I'm taking them off the list. They're not going to be the next team. Uh, the Bulls extended Zach Levine. You know, they extended Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan still, I don't think they're going to be the next team. I think we're going to make an entire Bulls video in a couple days. I, I know a lot of y'all might not be excited about that, but I'm taking the Bulls off. The Celtics have thrown Jalen Brown's name into what seems like every single big time trade imaginable. But if you're trading Jalen Brown, you're not trading for a reset, you're not trading for three first round picks and two swaps, that's not the, the navigation where you're gonna go. If you're trading Jalen Brown, you're trying to get Kevin Durant, you're trying to get one of the top 10 players in basketball. And because of that, I'm gonna say that Jalen Brown is not gonna get traded, but I wouldn't close the window completely on him going to a different team of free agency. That's all I'm saying. The Hornets. The Hornets have LaMelo Ball. And LaMelo Ball is going into what? Year number three at this point. He's already made an all-star appearance. He's an absolute stud. But I think LaMelo walks into training camp this season, look at his roster, be like, God damn. You know, God. Mason, you still here? You know, Mason Plumlee's still here? The only thing that's holding me back from picking them, definitely picking LaMelo Ball, definitely, is that he's still on his rookie contract and it's very rare we see an all-star caliber player that's on their rookie deal get moved because what is the reason for it? LaMelo Ball has zero leverage if he decides to go to Michael Jordan and say, ah, I want out. If anything, he goes to Michael Jordan and say, hey, where the, where's my goddamn help? You saw what they gave, the Cavs gave for Donovan Mitchell. We could have did that exact same thing. Legit, legit, they could have done an, a similar package to, to what the Cavaliers did, but they didn't. They said they were interested. They didn't do it. So if I'm the mellow ball, I'm looking at Terry Rozier and be like, Terry Rozier is a good player. I like Terry Rozier. Gordon Hayward, a good player. I like Gordon Hayward. That don't excite me. We've been in a play in two different years. We lost by a combined points of like 80 points. You know, I'm, I'm ready to hit the next step. It's year three. I'm ready to hit the next step. I'm looking at all of my peers around me. And they're doing real things. Like Anthony Edwards has been in the playoffs and he was an absolute stud there. <laughs> Same thing went about James Wiseman. Brother got a ring. He's got jewelry. Okay, but nobody after LaMelo has done um, anything, so. <sighs> that's that's the bad that's the bad part. The LaMelo thing is really unrealistic. It's just me thinking aloud because it, it will be completely unprecedented. I just remember last season, people speculated whether or not Zion would take his rookie extension. Oh, is he unhappy? And the first minute he could sign that contract, he did. And I would guess LaMelo Ball is in the same camp because that's a lot of money to pass up on. Realistically, it usually takes some time for a top three overall picks team to make the playoffs. Usually there's a reason why that team had the third overall pick. It's because they're bad and the Charlotte Hornets are kind of that. Um, but losing Miles Bridges and not replacing him or getting a center that can do anything definitely hurts. But LaMelo's not going anywhere. Let's be real. You could go the route of the Golden State Warriors because they're about to be super expensive. That's no fun, though. But you got Clay, You got Wiggs. You got Draymond. Jordan Poole is going to be up for an extension. Draymond Green is up for an extension. It's not likely that they're able to pay all of those people. But, like, the likelihood of that happening in season is extremely low, in my opinion. Could we be at a point that the all-star caliber trade is not going to happen? I went on to Twitter to ask y'all, what do you think? Nobody kept it serious. No, nobody gave me a legitimate answer. It was all oh, ha ha ha. I want this player to come to my team, which makes sense. Twitter, Twitter is for jokes. Yeah, that's that's it. I, I didn't really even say anything in this video. I was just rambling.